Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're going to look at a way to become more efficient and less frustrated when building out animations with GSAP and Scroll Trigger. How are we going to do this, you ask? Well, fortunately, GSAP gives us a tool we can use, which is called Labels. Let's see how they work. Here I am in the browser, and as you can see at the moment, as I scroll down, what will happen is that when this blue box reaches the center of the viewport, about here, it starts this long animation where it first moves 500 pixels to the right, and then it moves 500 pixels down, and then finally, finally, after waiting through this 10 second lead in, it rotates. Now, that rotation at the moment just has GSAP's default power1.out easing. I haven't set up any explicit easing in my code. So the question then is, what if I want to experiment with different kinds of easing just for that rotation? Well, if we want to experiment with different easings for that rotation, at the moment what we'd have to do is we'd have to sit through the entire first 10 seconds of that animation every single time that we wanted to make a change. Fortunately, we can save a lot of time by using GSAP's labels. So let's move into the code now and we'll see how it's done. So I'm here in VS Code, and you can see I already have some code set up. I have an index.html file, and then here on the right I have my app.js file. And for the sake of simplicity for this demo, what I'm doing is I'm just using some style tags in the head of my HTML document to create some basic CSS styles. Now let me move over my code editor a little bit to the right so we can see the browser. And here you can see what I've got is I've got a div with the class of box, and here's a rule for the div with the class of box, with a width of 100 pixels, height of 100 pixels, and a background color of steel blue. And then notice before and after the div with the class of box, I have two divs. Each of them have the class of full screen. And this is just simply used to give us some height in the browser so that we can actually scroll. And you can see all that is is a div with a height of 100 VH, or viewport height units. And then if we look a little bit further here in the head of the index.html file, you can see I have two script tags. One is for the GSAP core library, and then the other one is for the scroll trigger plugin. And then underneath that, I have my app.js file linked. Now let's look at app.js a tiny bit. Here in app.js, the first thing I'm doing is I'm registering the scroll trigger plugin on line one. And now here, starting on line three, is where we're actually creating this animation. What we're doing is we're creating a GSAP timeline and we're assigning it to a constant TL for timeline. And then lines five through seven are my series of tweens, which I'm chaining together as part of this timeline. So as we saw previously in that animation, what we're doing is we're targeting that box, and the first thing that's happening is it's moving to the right 500 pixels, and then after that it's moving down 500 pixels, and then finally we're rotating it 90 degrees. And we have that repeating twice right now. The other part of this is that we're using Scroll Trigger as a standalone Scroll Trigger instance. That's why we have scrolltrigger.create. And what we're doing in here is we're assigning our animation to be the timeline. We're setting the trigger to be the box or the div with the class of box. And we want this timeline animation to start when the top of that box hits the center of the viewport. So like we said, at the moment, the rotation of that box is just rotating with the default GSAP easing. But if we want to experiment with that to play around with different easing styles, at the moment we're going to have to sit through the entire sequence of the animation. And you can see it's 10 seconds, 5 plus 5, before we even get to that rotation. So let's see how we can use a label to get immediately to that rotation. This is what we're going to do. We're going to comment out our standalone scroll trigger instance for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here into the timeline, right before the tween with the rotation, and I'm going to use a method called add label. Now what we want to pass into add label is a string, which is going to be the particular name that we want to give to this label. And we can call it anything we want. But since we're placing it right before the rotation tween, let's just call it rotate. So by inserting this label directly into the timeline, we have access to this position or this point in time in the timeline. So check it out, here's what I can do. I can take the timeline, TL, and I can call a method like play, and I can pass in my label. So I'm going to pass in rotate right in here. And before we save, let's move our code out of the way a little bit. And let's refresh. And you can see we jumped right to that rotation. So now here's where we can really start to have some fun. Because what we can do, we can come over to Greensock's website to their ease visualizer. 
And notice here there's all these different easings. So here you have some of the basic ones like power one, power two, but then you get down to some of the more funky ones like back, elastic, bounce, and rough. And so we can come back into VS Code and we can experiment with some of those different types of easings. So let's come into that last tween, which is a rotation one, and we'll add a property of ease. And let's try sort of an obvious one, which will be bounce. So we'll do bounce, and now if I save, check out what happens to the box. Well, you can see, we can see the result of changing that easing right away. We can see that rotation right away because we've added that label. So I can try another one. How about instead of bounce, why don't we try elastic? And let me save. All right, and that one's a little bit different. And maybe let's try back. And there we have yet another type of easing. Oh, snap! Now, just so you know, there is another method that we could have used in place of add label, and that's simply called add. In this case, that'll basically do the same thing as add label. It's just that add is a more generic version. So add, as opposed to add label, allows us to pass in tweens, timelines, and callbacks in addition to labels. So what I'm saying is I could have just done dot add, and we would have gotten the same result. Now, there's different ways that we can position where this label actually gets placed in the timeline. And I'm not going to go into it extensively in this video, but I will show you one thing you can do. So let's comment out the ad that we created before within the timeline. Let's actually just delete it from the timeline. Let's comment out our standalone scroll trigger instance once again. And what we can do is we can actually use the add label method on the timeline, create whatever label name that we want. In this case, we'll do rotate again. And now there's a second argument that can get passed into add or add label. And what that argument is going to represent is the position of the label. So there's many ways to pass in the position argument, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a numeric value, which is going to represent the number of seconds elapsed since the start of the timeline. So in other words, let's say I want to position this rotate label three seconds from the start of the timeline. So I'll just put in the number three. And now let's uncomment this play method back in, and let's save and notice where the animation starts. So you can see it kind of started just a little bit after the start of the timeline, three seconds in. What if we want to start it a little bit further down the line? Like we want to get a little bit closer to the start of that rotation. Well, we know the rotation starts after 10 seconds. So let's put the label at eight seconds and see what that looks like. So I'm going to save. And you see it started a lot further down into the animation down here, just right before the rotation. By the way, I have a new course available on using GSAP and Scroll Trigger to really enhance your websites. In the course, we dive into a concept called scrolly telling. And if you haven't heard about scrolly telling, you're definitely going to want to check it out. You'll find the link down below in the description and the comments section. Now, if you haven't done so yet, also subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments down below what other GSAP or scroll trigger topics you'd like to see covered. See you next time.